Welcome everybody to the wooden crate tutorial. This is going to be a comprehensive beginning to end guide on how to make a wooden crate. It's going to include modeling, UV unwrapping, texturing, and rendering. We're going to be doing all of it in Blender except for the texturing which is going to be Substance Painter. So let's begin with modeling. Okay, so now we are modeling this wooden crate, but before we begin some administrative things. First of all, go to Edit, Preferences, go over to Key Map, and then your spacebar action, I want you to set it to search. Now, if you know another way to search, that's fine. But if you don't, just set this spacebar action to search. What this is going to let you do is every time you hit spacebar, you can look up any command you want by just typing it in. So shade smooth right there. Very useful. Second thing is we want to save our project before we begin it. So either go to file, save, or just hit control S. And we're going to save it on the desktop. So I'm just going to call mine, I'm going to call it Wooden Crate. It's always good to save your project before you even begin it. So a wooden crate pretty much looks like a modified box, and luckily we do have a box here. So what we want to do is get rid of everything that isn't the box, and we can either select this and then shift click this and then delete, or what you can do is click A, which is going to select everything. By the way, the keyboard shortcut is going to be up here. You're going to click A and then shift click it until this box is gone and then click X for delete. Okay, so now we have only this box and we want it to look more like a wooden crate. So I'm going to begin by taking these edges and smoothing them out. So I'm going to take this box. I'm going to go over to edit mode or just hit tab to do that. And we want to take all these edges, by the way, edge selections right here or click two. One, two, three is vertices, edges, and faces. Edge selection, you want to select all of these, you can do that by A. Okay, so now we have all these edges selected and we want to smooth them out. Uh, we call this beveling, so control B to bevel, and then just drag that out. And then when you like how much you beveled it, just scroll up on the mouse wheel like that, and it's going to add more loops. So we want something like this. Okay? back to object mode with tab. And you're going to see that this is not looking very smooth. We can either add more loops or we can actually do another trick, which I'm going to show you. You're going to take this object, spacebar, shade, smooth. Again, spacebar is very helpful for this. And that pretty much fixed the issue. Now what we want to do is take each of our faces and we want them to cave in a little. That's what a wooden crate looks like. So edit mode with tab, face selection with three, and I'm just going to shift click until I've selected all six faces. And then when I did this, or once I've done it rather, click I for inset, and just inset these somewhat, something like this. And then click to confirm. Okay, so once you've inserted these faces, we want them to cave in a little. And basically that's extruding. If you hit E for extrude, you're gonna see it's not doing exactly what we want. That's because it's extruding everything in the same direction. So to fix this, go to your toolbar, T uh, disables or enables it. Go to extrude region and extrude along normals. And then when we use this, it's going to actually fix our issue. So we're going to go like that. Okay. And now we have another issue, which is this kind of looks horrible, right? The shading is all off. And the reason is we used shade smooth. If we go back to shade flat, no longer an issue. However, our bevels from before are ruined. So how do we get both? What you want to do is go to Shade Smooth, and then we're going to basically edit what the smoothing does. So go over to Object Data, go over to Normals, and then Enable Auto Smooth, and that's going to fix it. And we still have our bevels, and basically this angle value right here decides where it's going to smooth. So if we lower it, you see we're going to lose our smoothing over here. So I'm going to go back over to 30 degrees. And that pretty much solves it. Okay, perfect. We're going to name this cube. We're going to call it main box. And then the next thing we want to do is add crosses on this side, this side, this one, and this one. So four sides. So how do we add like planks on each of these sides? What you want to do is you want to go into edit mode, select the face. We're going to hit shift D and that's going to duplicate it. And we have a duplicate. If you want to put it back where it belongs, right click and it's going to go back here. And then what we're going to do is hit P for separate and by selection. 
And you see now we have two ob objects. This is the new object. We're going to call it plank, like that. And you see if we disable this, we only see our plank. And what we want to do is we want to take this plank right here. We want to take it, go over to edit mode, and we want to give it some depth. So face selection, E, will extrude it like that. Okay, and then we can enable this and see what it looks like. And what we want to do is we want to center it along this face. So we can either um, take this and then move it with G and then X like that. Or to get it perfectly, we want to go to object, set origin, origin to geometry. And this is going to put our origin right in the middle. And then when we hit N for transform, right, we hit N to enable and disable we see we can actually change our location exactly. So hit zero and it's going to center. Okay. Next, what we want to do is we want to rotate it. I'm going to do it with the gizmo and I'm going to rotate it holding control for five degree increments until we get to 45 degrees like this, but we want it to go from edge to edge. So the way to do this is go to scale and you're going to see that this isn't actually facing the right direction. A way to fix this is to change global to local. And now we can actually scale it in the right direction like that. And don't worry about this weird looking intersection stuff. It goes away when you render. So we're going to um, solo this plank. We're going to go to face selection and delete these extra faces that we don't need. X faces. Okay, perfect. Now what we want to do is actually turn this into an X instead of a plank. Best way to do this is control R is going to add a loop cut, click, and then right click to center it. And then we're going to hit control B when this is selected and it's going to bevel it. We're going to scroll down for two, put it like that. And then we're going to go to face selection. And then we're going to extrude along normals like that. Okay, perfect. And now we have our X. Although we need to solo it again, you can either um, disable this or control click this to solo it. And then we're just going to delete these extra faces that we don't need. X faces. Okay, so now we have this X. If we want it to look a bit better, we can also bevel the edges. So two for edge selection. This one, this one, that one, that one. Basically everything on the surface of this X like that. Control B for bevel, and you're just going to bevel it a little, scroll up your mouse wheel, like that. Looks pretty good. Okay, I, I think I like the way that looks. Uh, we can enable this again, and object mode to see what everything looks like. Yeah, that's looking nice. Again, don't worry about this intersection, it goes away. So what we want to do is take this object and copy it over four times, so we don't have to make it four times. And there's a bunch of ways to do this. Um, probably the best way is you select it. I'm going to change this back to global. I'm going to select it. I'm going to duplicate it, shift D, and then right click to set it back to where it belongs. And we want to rotate it. However, we want to rotate it about the middle. And our 3D cursor is in the middle. If it's not, um, spacebar, um, snap cursor to world origin. Then what we want to do is object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Then when we go to rotation, the axis is going to be in the middle, the pivot. And then you can just rotate it by 90 degrees, either control click or type in 90 like that. And we're going to do that two more times. So shift D like that, right click to center it, rotate by 90, shift D, right click, rotate by 90. Okay. So let's see what we have. We now have this uh, main box right here and these four crosses. And I'm also going to add one more detail on this uh, main box. I'm going to go into edit mode and then I can either select these four um, edges or just alt click for a loop selection. So that's alt click. Okay. Then what you're going to do is you're going to bevel. You're going to bevel just a bit. And I want this to look actually pretty flat. So I'm going to set this to only two cuts like that. See how that looks? I like the way that looks. A bit of a weird box, but it's going to be more like stylized as a game asset. 
And we could do the same thing on the bottom, but I'm just going to say that this is going to be on the floor, so the detail doesn't really matter. If, if this uh, box you're making is going to roll around and all that, and you're going to see the bottom, you can add that detail. And I'm thinking that is looking pretty good for the modeling. Uh, we can actually... Yeah, I think these are actually named fine. We could just call them like crosses, but plank is fine. And this is how you model the box. And next we need to move on to UV unwrapping it. Before we begin with the UV unwrap, I just want to make some changes to this mesh. So first of all, this intersecting stuff, we can get rid of it pretty easily. So the way to do this is you select this cross and then shift click to select the rest of them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to scale everything in and that's going to get rid of the intersection. So S for scale and then shift Z is going to scale everything in except for the Z axis. Just like this, we drag it. Boom. So the intersection is gone and everything looks better too. So the second thing we need to do right before we begin UV unwrapping is hit um, A to select everything. Spacebar and type apply object transform. I already typed it in. And what this is going to do is for every one of our objects, it's going to set the scale to one uniformly and then rotation and location to zero uniformly. And this is very important because if you do not do this, you may introduce some distortion when you're UV unwrapping that shouldn't even be there. So do that and then we go to UV editing. And now we can actually begin unwrapping. So I like to do one object at a time. We're going to begin with this main box, control click visibility. That's going to solo it. And initially it should already have an unwrap. So if we select all the faces, you see we already have this, but we actually want to do a custom unwrap. So we're going to ignore this and make our own. So the name of the game is basically putting seams where we want to and then kind of treating this like a paper object and we're going to control how it's going to unfold in the way we want. So what we need to do is put some seams down. So go to edge selection, that's two. And then we just want to put some seams down. So I'm going to begin with this top. I'm going to alt click here to add a loop. And then I'm just going to select these right here on every side like that. And like that. And then the last one here. And then to make this a seam, spacebar, mark seam. Or you can just go to UV up here and set mark seam when you have it selected. Then if we go to face selection and click L on this area inside this border, click L, it's going to select this area and then hit U, unwrap. And this is our area unwrapped. So this is the main square in the middle. And then these two um, faces correspond to each of these two faces. So you can imagine this unwrapping like paper. And what we can actually do is select these faces like that and just move them off to the side. And we have all the other faces to deal with. And what we can actually do is turn on this link button right here and it's going to show everything else. Okay, so now what we want to do is take care of the rest of these. So I'm going to just deal with these interiors first. So Alt and then just shift clicking to get the rest of them. And this, and if this looks like the most tedious process in this tutorial, that's because it is. Nobody really likes UV unwrapping, I don't think. I know I don't like it. So we're just going to keep doing it. Alt, Shift, Shift. And you know what? You can have some objects that are way, way worse to unwrap. This is pretty much as easy as it gets, luckily for us. So we're just going to keep uh, selecting these until we have all of them. And then make sure to get the, the bottom as well. Like that. And that. And that. And then finally, last one. Boom. Spacebar, mark seam. Then what we can do, face selection, click L when you're hovering over this area. And then same thing here and here. And this one. And now what you want to do is when you have all of these selected, go to U, unwrap. And now we have the rest of these unwrap, G to bring them down here. So now all we have left is this frame. So we've already taken care of these. So we just need this frame. And to deal with this, it should be pretty easy. What we're going to do is we're going to put a loop right here. So alt click, whoops, edge selection, and then do the same thing down here symmetrically. And then we're just going to put a seam along one of these. So you could put it here or here. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to put it here. So remember to keep shift clicking to keep your last selection. And then we're going to spacebar, mark seam. 
Okay, perfect. Now we click L once we have face selection on this area, and then we click unwrap, and it's unwrapped that area. It pretty much unfolded it like a cylinder, is the way you can imagine this. And then we have the top and bottom, so L, whoops, deselect everything, L, L, U, unwrap. Perfect. So now we should have everything unwrapped. So we're going to click A to select everything. You're going to notice that everything isn't the right size. We can fix this. Go to UV, average island scale. Perfect. And now we need everything to be inside this box. So UV, pack islands. And there we go. This is a custom unwrap. What we can do is we can stretch this over here. Go to display, stretch, and we can either put this on angle or area. And this is going to show the distortion. The darker the blue, the better. And if it's like red or green, that's not as good. And you're going to notice that all of this is pretty blue. And that's because this is one of the best ways to unwrap it. You see, there's a bit of a green on these corners here, but it really isn't that big of a deal. You just don't want like yellows and reds. So this is a good unwrap. And all we have to do now is the four crosses. And since they're all the same, we basically need to do it once and then just apply the same idea over and over again. So I'm just going to show how to do one of these. And then I think it's probably a good idea to uh, fast forward through it. So control click on one of these. So we can do this one. Okay. So we're going to go into edit mode and then we want to put down our seams. And what I'm thinking is we have this X. And then we can also have all of these side pieces on their own. So to do that, we're going to go to edge selection. Select this, this, and basically we're just going to isolate this X from the rest of the model. Okay, that should be good. You can also put seams over here, but it's on the boundary of the model, so you don't actually need to. Spacebar, mark seam, and now we've separated it. Okay, that's looking good. But we also want to, well, I'll, I'll, actually, let me show you what happens if we unwrap this. So I'm going to click A, U, unwrap. And you're going to notice that there's heavy distortion in all of these side pieces, but not the X. To fix this, what I was going to say is we're just going to Alt-click to add this um, edge selection right here. We're going to do it three more times. And now we mark seam. And then we're going to um, select all of these faces, U, unwrap, and it's going to update and you notice that the distortion is a lot less. There's still some, but it's a lot less than what it was, and I'm fine with this level of distortion. So we're going to select all of these. We're going to go to UV, Average Island Scale, and then Pack Islands, like that. And if you want this to be with the rest of them, you just select this um, area, R for Rotate, select 90 degrees, and then G for Grab, and put it here. Okay, so basically what we've done is we fixed this area, and this X is looking a bit funky. Let me actually check what we can do to check as you select this face right here. L to select the rest of it, so make sure you select this first. U, follow active quads, and click OK. And yeah, that pretty much fixed it. So we're just going to do another average island scale and pack islands. And, <laughs> and this uh, moved back, so let's actually take care of that again like that. So basically what I'm going to be doing is repeating this process three more times. Same idea. I'm going to fast forward it. Make sure to watch that part if you're still a bit shaky on it. So I'm going to fast forward now. Okay, so I just finished doing the last cross and you see that each one of these actually now is UV unwrapped. So this one's UV unwrapped. Actually, let me show all of these. If we select this one, go to edit mode, this one's UV unwrapped, and then finally this main box, object mode, this one's UV unwrapped. But what we want to do is combine all of these together. We do not want these five objects. We want them as one crate object. So one way to do this is we're going we're gonna to go to object mode. We're going to select all these objects, and then spacebar, join. This joins the objects into this one main box, which I'm now going to call crate because we've graduated uh, to crate. And then you see, if we go to edit mode, we have all our UVs as if they were kind of overlaid over each other and it's pretty disgusting and green. So the way to fix this is we're going to select all of these faces, UV, um, average island scale, then UV, uh, pack islands. And there we go. It basically took all our unwraps and combined them together and put them inside this big 
puzzle box. You can think of it like that. Let me move this over. Now at this point you can call it done. However, what you do want to do is maximize um, your UVs. And what I mean is all the space right here that we're not using and here we're not using is wasted texture space. So ideally what you do is you pack everything together to save as much space as possible. And I'll show you some of the ways we can do that. Now generally when we do this, we just do not want to scale up or stretch these things. We can move them, we can rotate them, all that is fine. So for example, this area inside here is blank and we have these objects here that can fit inside it. So it would make sense to just, you know, take them, put them inside. There's nothing wrong with that. So we take them, put them inside. And what this is going to let us do in a bit, oh, whoops, make sure you do not forget any of the polygons. I don't know why I keep calling them polygons. I guess they're faces in Blender. <laughs> um, make sure you do not forget any of these. This is actually going to give us some room to get some extra texture space. You'll see in a second. Take that, put it in here. And there's a lot of ways to optimize it. And generally what you want to do is this automated optimization that we did with the pack islands. And then you want to kind of go over it by hand. Okay, put this one here. We have a big chunk here. Uh, let me make room for it. Move this down here. And this process can take a lot, of, a lot of time if you really fine tune it. It just depends on how accurate you want to be. Okay, this part we're going to rotate by 90 degrees. Just type that in. And then we can just fit it in here. And hopefully we have enough room. We'll see. Let's go with these. Uh, rotate 90 degrees. And basically the only requirement is that you do not stretch anything, like I said, and you do not want anything overlapping. So this right here, not good. You do not want them to overlap. But as long as you follow those guidelines, it really doesn't matter. And nowadays with Substance Painter and all these programs where you paint on things directly in 3D, it really doesn't matter how accurate you do this. It always helps, but it's not as important. If you texture in Photoshop, very important. Okay, so almost done. Take this whole piece. Oh, and by the way, a shortcut I haven't, I mean, I've used before, but haven't been using now is you can click L in this uh, window too. So you can just click L and it's going to select this whole island. Uh, where can I put this? Put this down here. Okay, so there we go. So now all we have is these X's, etc. And we can optimize it a bit more, but at this point, I'm just going to select everything move it to the center and we can scale it a little bit. So now we're using a bit more of this uh, space. So that's just a bit of optimization. Make sure that everything is inside the, the boundary of it and that nothing's intersecting. And yeah, we can do a bit better, but this is honestly pretty good. So this is unwrapped and just to check, we always like checking our unwrap. Uh, pretty much the way everybody does it is they go to shading. Well, they don't necessarily do it like this, but this is a way to do it. You have your box and you have a material by default, which we're going to rename uh, crate material or just crate. We're going to hit shift A and then add a texture. Make that a checker. This is checkerboard. Put that in color and you're going to see it updates. We're going to make this a bit smaller. And basically, if we did not UV unwrap it, it would not look so nice. So this checkerboard is really wrapping around everything pretty nicely. And we put a seam somewhere here. I wonder if we can see it. I guess we can't. Pretty well placed seam. And yeah, there we go. And the reason this stuff kind of looks diagonal um, instead of um, like this, it kind of looks diagonal. The reason for that is because all of this is rotated. If we were to take this and like rotate it this way, it would not do that, but that's fine. So there we go. This is UV unwrapped. Make sure everything is the way you like it. Okay, perfect. So let's say everything is the way we like it. I'm just going to hit save. And now what we want to do is an export. I'm just going to do another apply object transform just in case. I don't think we actually needed it, but it's fine. So once we have our crate, you're just going to select it. You're going to go to file, export, and there's a couple options you can do. FBX is probably the best one for Substance Painter. So export, FBX. I'm going to put this on the desktop as woodencrate.fbx. 
should be good. And I don't think you need to mess with any of these. I think they should all be fine. Export FBX. Okay, so now we are done with the UV unwrapping and now we need to get to texturing inside of Substance Painter. So now we have Substance Painter open and it's time to begin texturing. And this is probably the most fun part of the whole process. So I'm gonna go to File, New. It's gonna open up this window and we're gonna select and just go to wherever you saved your mesh. For me, it's here on the desktop. And then we can choose what resolution we want our texture. Now, because we UV unwrapped so well and we used a lot of the texture space, 1024 by 1024 should honestly be enough. So we're gonna use that and then we're just gonna click OK. And it's gonna take some time. And also a warning, Substance Painter goes a bit slow on my computer, but it shouldn't be too bad for this tutorial or anything. We're not doing anything crazy here. So it imported our FBX exactly how we want it to. If you click F3, you're gonna see the uh, unwrap we have. So it's in here. Uh, shift and right click drag lets you change the lighting. And that's also in here. And first of all, we need to bake our texture set. So what we need to do is texture set settings. Scroll down, go to Bake Mesh Maps, and then you can pretty much set all this to as it is. Um, you might want to change your output size if you're doing a higher res texture. I'm just doing 1024 by 1024, and we're just going to click Bake. And baking should not take this long for this model, right? It doesn't have that many polygons. And there we go. There we go. Okay, so we have our ambient occlusion, curvature, all that baked in. So I'm going to try to only use substances that come with the program, nothing that I have from like outside sources. So first of all, go to layers. We're going to delete all the layers. We are going to go to all because that's where I like to search for things. And I'm just going to look up wood, see what wood materials we have over here. Now, I'm pretty sure this one right here, this uh, wood beach veined comes with the program. So I'm just going to take it and apply it. It's going to take a second and already it's looking pretty good, but there are some fixes we need to do. So this um, face back here behind the cross, um, the wood is going up and I actually like the way that looks. However, this one's going to the side, this one's going to the side, and so is this one. And I want all of them to be going up. So that's the first thing we need to change. So if we are happy with the way our wood looks, we can always change the color of it. Let's just do a bit of tweaking, I guess. Uh, we can make it a bit darker like that. Yeah, honestly, I do like the way it came, so I'm just going to leave it as is. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to right-click and add a white mask. And basically, now we just add things that we remove from this mask. So for example, we don't want this face right here that the wood's going to the side, etc. So we're going to go right here to Polygon Fill. We're going to click Polygon Mode and bring this to zero. And then just click, whoops. Just click the faces that you do not want. So I don't want that one, and I don't want that one. And I think the last one should be facing up. And then generally, I think everything else is looking fine. It's fine that this is going to the side since it's the top. Okay, so once you're happy with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy it, and this time I'm going to take this mask and I'm going to invert it. So now this layer only has basically the opposite of what we did. It only has these faces. And what we need to do is take these and reorient them so the wood is facing up. Easy. All you do is you open this up and then look for anything that can be rotated. So for example, this wood fiber, I'm going to go into this pattern and we're going to just look very closely. We're going to go and we're going to take this rotation and change it to 90. And you can already see that rotated. We're going to go to wood veins and see if that can be rotated right here in the wood pattern and change that to 90, and there we go. Now it's pretty much facing up. Okay, and now let's make this visible, and now everything is oriented the right way. Okay, so the first kind of stylistic thing I wanna do is add kind of planks, right? It's not gonna be one piece of wood, it's gonna be a whole bunch of planks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a fill layer, put it at the top, and I guess it's good to name these, so I'm gonna call it planks, I'm gonna call this one uh, rotate because that's what we did. So we're going to take our planks. We're going to set the color to something close to black. We're going to take the height and bring it down a lot. So it's going to go inwards and then everything else is fine. So I'm only going to keep color, height and normal. So I'm just going to disable everything else. And then we just want to add a, actually, no, we're not going to add a mask here. We're going to put this inside a folder 
and add a mask to the folder. So we're going to add a black mask to this folder. And basically, since everything is inside this folder, this mask applies to everything under it. So we are only concerned with, let's say, the faces we were just talking about. So I'm going to go to Polygon Fill, bring this to 1. We want this one, this one, and you see the fill is going to affect this, this one, and this one. Okay, perfect. And now what we need to do is go from here to planks. And I'll show you how I actually plan to do that. So inside planks, inside this folder, I'm going to add another black mask. And now what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to paint these planks on. So I'm going to go to um, brush right here. And then let me bring this up. I'm going to make sure that actually tangent ramp is fine. Let me see. Yeah, that's looking good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control and scroll to make this smaller and hold control, right click and go up to make it a harder stroke like that. Or all these settings are also up here, by the way. So what I'm going to do is just change the uh, size of that a little. And then I'm just going to click, hold shift and hold control to make it straight and then click. And there we go. We've made this line. Actually, I'm going to make it a bit smaller than that. Like this. And you can see how that is pretty much adding a plank. And we can do this a whole bunch of times. Do it here. And the reason it's not actually going over the cross, even though we're painting over it, is again because of this mask out here in the folder. So that's why I added that in. And I'm just going to do this. Again, these aren't all the same size, but I would argue that that would actually make it look more attractive, right? It shouldn't be perfect. So we have that, and we have the lighting working because we changed the height. And then all we're going to do is we're going to do this to the other four sides. And we can do a bunch of these little, whoops, you can always undo. We can do a whole bunch of these little stylistic things to make this look more interesting and realistic. So I'm going to add these planks, and then I'm also going to discolor some of these planks, maybe every other one. And then maybe stain some of the wood, put some dirt, etc. Okay, there we go. And yes, some part of some parts of painting are tedious, but I do find this a lot more uh, fulfilling than UV unwrapping. So we're just going to keep putting these planks on. Again, click, shift, and control, and click to do this um, selection. So click, shift, and control. That is way too close. Let's move that over. Click, shift, and control, and click. And also, by the way, we should be getting a bit of this on this side although I am doing it pretty well. And if we do, we can actually erase that excess. So we're going to take care of that next. Okay, bring this there. And then we should have, this should be the last side that we need to do it to with these vertical stripes. Like that. And there are some materials that come, I don't think they come with substance, you need to download them, that have this like plank stuff in them. But I do think it's better to know how to make it and make it look pretty good. Okay, so there we go. Now we have these planks, and it's already looking a lot better than it did. On the top, I want planks as well, though this time I want them going this way, so horizontally. Kind of like a wooden lid to this crate. Oh, that reminds me. It's not working because I did not actually enable this face, so go to Folder, Polygon Fill, add that, and then it appears. Okay, we're going to go back to this mask and planks and just go to Brush and add a couple more strokes. Like that, and that. I'm kind of intentionally making this one kind of bigger than the last one so it doesn't look perfect. And then this should be the last one. Okay, there we go. So now we have these lines that make everything have a bit more depth. And now we want to discolor some of these planks. So the way to do this, or one of the ways to do this, I'm going to bring this up like that. I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to take your base color and change it to pass through. And basically this means the color is going to leak through all the layers beneath it. Okay, so we have that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to tint it. So we're going to add a uh, right click, add a, we're going to add a filter. And then go to, hmm, I guess, you know, we're not going to do it like this. We're going to, we're going to right click it. We're going to go to levels. And then when we're in base color, we're just going to dip this or bring it up a little rather. And you can see it's making it a tiny bit darker. Yeah, that's making it a tiny bit darker. 
And then what we're going to do is only apply this darkness to some area. So we're going to add a black mask. And then we're going to hit F3 to be in this mode. We're going to click C. So we're only seeing the color. Uh, if you don't want to click C, you can just like pick base color in here. And then we're just going to be drawing some masks. And you see we have our lines, so it's going to be very easy. So we want to make this bigger. Control, right click, and drag like that. And notice that it would make much more sense to use squares instead of circles for painting. So one way to do this is to go to alpha and change this to, you can either type in square or rectangle, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, use this, it's called square rectangle. I'm just gonna scale this down so it fits. And then every other plank or something like that, I'm going to discolor. So like this, Oh, by the way, uh, quick issue. You see that it actually painted over here. We don't actually want that. So a way to fix this, and by the way, that's because it's going over this cross. So a way to fix that is in when you're in painting, what you want to do is change your alignment to UV since we're working in this uh, UV space. But I do think we're going to change the color of the crosses anyway, so it's not a big deal. But just so you know, uh, and again, we can always fix this back in 3D view later. So something like that, every other plank, and we do that on all of these. And you can actually add two layers of this, so you can make some of them darker and some of them brighter, because all I'm doing is making some of them darker, but you can make it a lot more interesting. I'm just doing a quick and dirty job that I think is gonna look pretty good as an end result. Oh, overextended a little like that. These ones go horizontally, but you know, same idea. Click, control, shift, click. And we do it for every other one. Make sure to rescale since they're not even, at least in my case. Scale this one down like this. And let's see what this is starting to look like even though we're not done. So F2 for 3D, M for material mode, yeah. Yeah, this discoloration is adding a good bit of realism to this, and we're going to make it a little more subtle in a bit. So let's go back to F3 and finish our painting with C. Like that. Okay, so we want this here. Oh, and by the way, the reason why we needed to rotate some of the wood in the beginning is because you can see this is going horizontally, even though it's not necessarily the top piece. If they're all going vertically, then we would not have had an issue. So that's something we could have done in the UV unwrapping step, but honestly, it's better that I didn't. So, I mean, it's a teachable moment, I guess. And we only need one more up here. And if you want more room, I think you can hit tilde no tab. Yeah, you hit tab and that actually makes this bigger. So you can actually see what you're doing and you can do that on, I think, any window. That might not be the case. Okay, there we go. Quick and dirty and get this done over here. Okay, I like the way that looks. Hit tab to, or I keep hitting tilde, hit tab to exit out of that. F2, M, and there we go. So now what we want to do is Oh, what we want to do is actually fix this. Make sure that we are, I guess we should go back to UV for this. I didn't paint this on fully. Did I do that anywhere else? I didn't do it here. Anywhere else? Need to do it a bit here. And a bit here. Okay, so I think that should look better. Yeah, there we go. And what we want to do is make this a little bit more subtle so it's not so crazy like, oh, this is tan and then that's orange. So the way we do this is when we have this layer selected, which I'm going to call tint, you want to dip this a little. And you see it's becoming more and more subtle. So something like that should be good. Yeah, I like the way that looks. And then we're also going to add this to the crosses. So I'm just going to go to Polygon Fill, go to Object, and then just click these. Substance Painter knows uh, what objects they, they actually are. They're separated. There we go. Now our crosses are a bit darker too. I'm going to make this a little less subtle. Whoops. Make this a little less subtle. 
like that. Okay, there we go. That's looking good. Okay, and we can actually add another level. So I'm gonna go to levels and this one's gonna affect the height. So I'm gonna change this to height and then just mess with this a little. Or you know what? We need to go to height and go to pass through. There you go, now it's working. And you see wherever we have this mask, it's gonna make the wood look a little rougher, which kind of looks cool. And then now I'm gonna take these, this uh, base color and dip it back down a little again. Okay, there we go. So we have our planks. Uh, next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some dirt on the base of this. This is actually very quick to do. What you wanna do is go to all. I'm gonna type in dirt, cause there's a dirt material. Take it, put it, looks horrible. How do we fix it? Uh, what you wanna do is open this up, take this mask and remove this uh, mask editor. We're gonna add a different one. So go to smart mask. And then there should be something called ground dirt. We just drag that in. And then everything is on the ground like this. Of course, it's a bit too harsh. So we take this base color and basically dip it a little until it's kind of just staining. Yeah, it's just staining what we have. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna do kind of the opposite, right? I'm gonna make some parts of the wood lighter. So I'm gonna add a fill. And on this fill, I'm gonna enable color and maybe roughness and that's it. So roughness, I'm just gonna bring up to like 0.8. So this should be the roughest part of the object wherever we have this. And then the color I'm gonna set to this um, white or it should be gray technically. Black mask, and I'm just gonna paint some areas with a brush, if I can find brushes. And I'm just gonna pick this one. So I'm gonna scale this up, maybe add a bit of spacing and just kind of paint some of these areas. And then don't worry, it's not gonna look horrible for too long. I'm gonna fix it. So just add some white areas wherever you think the wood would look a bit lighter. Like that, maybe some up here. Okay, so now we have this. We're gonna start off by taking it, by taking the uh, mask, going to filter and adding a blur. And we're just gonna increase that like that. There we go. Then we're gonna take this base color and dip it a lot until you can barely tell. Okay, let's see. Disabled, enabled. We can go for a bit stronger, maybe five. Okay, so that's very subtle, but it does add something, right? Some of these areas are lighter. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Let's see, is there anything else we wanna do? Yeah, I'm gonna add some holes on the top here. So I'm gonna add a fill, and then I'm just gonna call this, I haven't been naming anything, or <laughs> most of the things, you should probably do it. Okay, so we have this, we're gonna enable height, color, and normal. So I'm gonna take this base color, bring it to something close to black. And this is similar to what we did with the planks, dip the height, probably all the way actually. Add a black mask and remove this alpha and I'm gonna add a shape like that. And then harden it with control, right click um, up and then scale it down. And then, whoops, that is not working the way I intended. Make sure everything is set the way you want it to like that. There we go. I think it was because of the spacing. I'm gonna bring that down. Oh, the issue is we still have some of our brush settings from before. So bring down the jitter for all of these. And then there we go. That's what we want. Make it a bit smaller. Okay, and no, I want it a bit smaller than that. Okay, so we have one there, one there, and I'm just gonna add it to all of these sides. Make sure you zoom outside of your object. You can always rotate with the shift right click to move the lighting. There, there. Okay, and I don't think we want that on the bottom. We're gonna take this black and tone it down a little. Base color, dip it like that. 
And that is looking like a pretty legit asset right there. I think I'm going to take this dirt and darken it, or not darken it, make it a bit more transparent. Just a touch. And I think that is done. I don't know if you agree, but I think that is done. So, okay, so once you're done with your textures and you're happy with everything, um, you, you're happy with how it looks in the UV editor and all this, um, what you're going to do is you're going to go to File, Export Textures. Now, this is very specific for Blender, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to export it to, I mean, you want a folder, I'm just going to dump them on the desktop. I'm going to go to Dilation and set it to uh, Dilation plus Diffusion. And basically this is saying it's going to put the texture on your UV, but what, what should it do in the gaps in between? And basically these are the instructions for it. I'm going to do PNG with 8 bits. Again, 1024 by 1024. You can always up res it later. Go to configuration, PBR metal rough. Is this already set to? Yeah, PBR metal rough. And then we want our base color. We want roughness, metallic, normal. We don't actually need height or emissive. So one thing that you need to do is if you're going into Blender, this is set to Direct X Normals. Blender uses OpenGL, so take this normal OpenGL and put this right here. And now we are using OpenGL. You can always convert it later. And then I'm just going to modify these names. So it's just going to be the texture set, which is Crate, and then it's going to follow it by whatever text we have here. Okay, so this is looking good. Um, Yes, and we don't need ambient occlusion or any of this because we're going to be using cycles. And then once you're happy with all this, just click export. Okay, and then just make sure our textures are exported. We're going to go to the desktop. And yes, we have our base color, metallic, normal, and roughness that look like our UV map. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going back over to Blender to render all of this and basically put in our maps. So on to rendering. We are in the home stretch. All we need to do is import our textures and set everything up so that we can finally render the crate. So what you want to do is go over to shading and you're going to see that we still have our checkerboard from before. Click X to delete that. And now we're just going to import our textures. So shift A, that is add, go to texture and then go to image texture. And then we're going to connect this one to base color and we're going to click open and then just import your base color, which I have on the desktop. Okay, or you can just drag it from a folder if that's faster. So again, Shift A, Texture, Image Texture, and then we're gonna go to Metallic. Then we're gonna click Open, and then just open our Metallic Map. Now for this one, we do need to do an extra step because Metallic Map isn't just like color data. It's pretty much numbers between zero and one captured in an image. So we go from color to non-color data. Make sure you do that. Then go Shift A, Texture, Image Texture, and now we go to Roughness. So wherever it is, there it is. Then add your Roughness, and then same idea, go to Non-Color Data. And then finally, we need our Normal Map. So Shift A, Texture, Image Texture, and then finally, let's add our Normal. For this one, you also set it to Non-Color Data. Now notice that this has a color output, whereas we need a vector, that's purple, input. So what we do is we do Shift A, go to Vector, Normal Map, and basically this is a converter that will take our normal image in here and it will output the vector for the normal map. So there you go, you see all of this has been updating and it's looking pretty good, although everything looks pretty flat, but that's because our environment is just this kind of blurred out thing, right? We need a HDRI. So to set up this world HDRI, go to World over here and then scroll to wherever your stuff is. Here it is. We're going to take this background and delete it with X. Then click Shift A, Texture, and this time Environment Texture because it's a spherical image. We're going to connect this to the world output, Open, and then pick whatever HDRI you want. Um, I'm going to leave a link in the description for where to get HDRIs for free. Uh, HDRI Haven is great. That's where I get mine. And there we go, we put in our HDRI, and now we just go to rendered mode up here. And right now we're using EV, so it's not completely physically accurate. We need to, we need to add things like ambient occlusion, etc. But it's already looking great. 
we're going to go over to back over to object because we still have some stuff to finesse to get maximum quality change this to multi scatter ggx and then this to random walk then what we're going to do is ior is index of refraction every material has it you can look it up um, the wood ior when you look it up is 1.33 and then you take this value and there's a formula. Again, there's gonna be a link in the description for how to do this. Um, there's a formula for converting index of refraction to specular. And when you do this and you input 1.33, you're gonna get 0.251 for specular. Again, there's gonna be a link in the description for how to do this. And then we don't need any sheen tint. Okay, so there we go. We have our shader set up. We're gonna to go to layout. We're gonna to go to rendered view, and then we're gonna bring this over to cycles. Okay, so now we're using cycles. I'm gonna use GPU. It's also easier on my recording when I use GPU. Okay, so there we go. Um, we do want to make this look a bit more stylized. So we're gonna to go to color management. It should already be in filmic. Change this to medium high contrast. It's gonna add a bit more contrast. And then just play with your exposure until it's what you like. I like something like that, maybe a bit less, 0.4. There we go. Okay, and now all we need to do is set up a camera. So what you want to do is if you do not have a camera, we're going to click Shift A and then Camera. That's going to add a camera. I'm just going to go to Solid View for a moment. That's gonna add a camera, but it's already inside here. And if you already want to set up your view so you're looking at this, all you have to do is hit Control, Alt, and then zero on the number pad. And that's gonna move the camera here. So again, Control, Alt, zero on the number pad. It's not gonna work on zero um, on the top of your keyboard. It needs to be the number pad. Okay, so let's adjust this. Click N to open your transform settings. And then down here in camera lock, enable lock camera to view. So now when we move around, it moves the camera with it. So let's just get the angle we like, something like that. I'm gonna to go to my camera settings and bump this up to a focal length of 65 millimeters. Go to output and turn this into a square image because this is kind of a waste of space. We need it to be square. So I'm just gonna do a small render of 800 by 800. Whoops, not 80, 800. There we go. Just zoom in a little, and then we're gonna unlock. So now we can move and it will stay in the same place. Actually, let's lock again and just shift this over a little. Okay, unlock. Okay, there we go. Now we just enable rendered view in cycles. And you can see this is looking really, really good and really realistic, I would say. Okay, so now all we have to do is set up some render settings. So in here in the render tab, Go down to film and enable transparency to get rid of this background if you don't want it. We've already set our exposure. We don't have any hair. We can disable that. And then for render, I'm going to do, let's do 400 samples. That might be overkill, but I think that should be fine. Okay, everything looks good. Everything looks good. And then when you're ready, you're just going to hit render, render image, or just hit F12. And I'm just going to fast forward the rendering process. So there we go, we have our final rendered image. This is, let me make it a bit bigger. This is what it looks like, it's looking really good. Of course, we can always play a bit more with the texturing before, or we can mess with the lighting a bit more to make it look more dramatic, but generally this is looking very good. This is just with a random HDRI background, we didn't even set up anything crazy. This is what we can get, and I mean, it did take a while, but again, this is a tutorial, it takes longer than it would in real life. You could probably whip this up in under 30 minutes uh, once you have experimented enough and know what you're doing. So this is looking really good. And of course, we wanna save this render. We wanna save our work. So you can either hit Shift S, which is the shortcut, or go to Image and then Save As, so Shift S. Then go to Desktop or wherever. I'm gonna lower the compression. And then you can set some uh, settings, like do you want it to be a PNG, etc. I'm going to put mine on the desktop, and I'm going to call it Wooden Crate Render. Yay! Save as image. It's going to take a second, should be done, and now I'm going to see if it actually did it. So I'm going to open this up, remove this. 
and it should be somewhere in here. There we go, there is our render. I'm gonna open it with some kind of viewing software. There we go, this is our render. So this is kind of the end of the tutorial. So thank you for watching it. Um, this has been the longest one I've made yet. If you want to support what I do, there is a Patreon link below. Um, there are benefits, you can look up those benefits. But either way, thank you for watching more long form tutorials in the future and hope you learned something.